Hello, welcome to, well, this is Christy Bridges from One Moment Wiser. And I have a special guest today, Cindy Lou Miller. She was with us a few weeks ago, and I tell you what, we're kind of thinking that we need to have a One Moment Wiser, Be Bold You regular broadcast because she's so much fun to talk to and has such depth of understanding. And you guys wanted her back. So we're here to finish her story. Now, just for a second, let me tell you about One Moment Wiser. We are, I'm here to do a podcast that we also do on Facebook Live. So if you're watching us on Facebook Live, that's awesome. Tell your friends, bring them on. If you're listening to the podcast, share this podcast, leave a review. But our whole goal is to help you live more wisely, help you to understand yourself better, communicate and enjoy your relationships better, and connect to your creator. Because, wow, life opens wide when you do those things. We want to help you. And I want to introduce you to some people like Cindy Lou who are displaying wisdom in unique ways. So, Cindy Lou, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It is always a pleasure. Like, we've done this about twice, but it's always a pleasure. <laughs> I agree. Um, I want to keep doing it. So we'll just keep calling it a pleasure. So yes. tell us about Be Bold You just for a second so that people understand why One Moment Wiser and Be Bold You are, are connecting. Okay. So Be Bold You, we take a look at um, life's twists and turns and how can we make those things beautiful. So a lot of it's using our personalities, the things that we've learned in life, different assessments, figuring out our values, and then taking all of that, lining it up with the scripture to find the terms and the phrases that we need to use to reset our mindset. So we're doing a lot of the same things, you and I, we're just doing it from a different point of view. And it's quite fun to be able to help people to, you know, live their lives more out loud and and more connected to one another and to to God, definitely. So it all fits. Fantastic. And that's actually why you're participating in the Option Ocean Challenges or an Option Ocean collaboration, because you are keen on helping people assess themselves and then line up with scripture so that they can really move into an abundant life, right? And yes. so I'm really grateful for your participation. You've been a blessing to all of us there. <laughs> when we last talked, you shared about leaving the northeastern United States for New Zealand, and you haven't looked back. You've been really satisfied with that move. But I think that our readers, it seems, I mean, our, some of our viewers actually might consider something like that for themselves someday. And they need to know what that feels like and what they need to be thinking about and prepared for ahead of time. So revisit just a little bit why you moved. You had chosen New Zealand out of the blue during a conversation about missions with some friends way before you met the man who would eventually, you know, spark that move. <laughs> and then you fell in love, but you didn't go right away, did you? No, when we got married, because he had gone from New Zealand to America and lived there for 29, well, when we got married, it had been about 27 years. Um, he understood what it would mean for me to move to another country and what I would be giving up. And I have five children in the USA. And now I have nine grandchildren. And he has three children and two grandchildren. So we have 11 grandchildren now between us, which is quite fun. But they are all in the United States. So because he knew what it was to move so far away, he said, when we got married or when we got engaged, we'll live in the States for five years and then we'll go. So that was his commitment. You know, we'll get married. We'll live here for five years. You can have that time with your children, watch your grandchildren be born and and have this time because it was at the time when they were getting married and they were, you know, beginning their lives together. So 
a year and a month after we were married, he was diagnosed with Parkinson's. So everything kind of changed Uh, within six months from that time. He was out of work within a year. He was completely out of work and on long term disability. We moved from Vermont to Arizona because he couldn't shovel snow and I didn't want to. So we moved to Arizona when April 2012 arrived. He woke me up one night. He says, I can't move. Well, I had kind of gotten used to, you know, getting up out of bed and helping him get up and get to the bathroom or whatever in the middle of the night because he'd be stiff. I was like, no problem. I'll get up. I'll come help you. And I got up and went around to the other side of the bed to try to help him up. And he was a statue from head to toe. He was in a complete what they call off state. So Parkinson's, they have you're on or you're off. And when you're off, your body's basically not working. And so he was frozen from head to toe. And I decided at that point, I'm taking you home to New Zealand this year. I don't know how, I don't know what to do to move that far, but we're moving in 2012. So, because I wanted him to get home when he could enjoy his country. I wasn't sure how quickly Parkinson's was gonna, you know, carry on or if he would even still be here today. And thank God he is. It was the best move we made. So, but there was so much to do. There was so much to look at, you know, how do you move? We still had a house in Vermont. We had stuff with us in Arizona. So I had to figure out, do we move everything from Arizona back to Vermont and then move from Vermont to New Zealand? Or do we go to Vermont, sell everything and move things from Vermont to Arizona and then from Arizona to Phoenix, I mean, to to New Zealand? We decided the second option and we sold almost everything except for 10 suitcases worth of probably eight suitcases because we had our clothes that we had brought with us. So eight suitcases worth of um, items, which we moved. Thank you. Southwest allows you to fly for $50 a bag. And and they pretty much don't care how many bags you have as long as there's room on the plane. So we paid for 10 extra bags or something like that was ridiculous. It was crazy. So we moved across the country for about $500, which is amazing when you think about it. <laughs> but it was a lot of work. <laughs> and just so, getting my stuff down for 10 bags, I can't even imagine. Well, we had things in Arizona already, so we didn't quite get down to 10 bags, but but we did sell almost everything. So then we move, uh, then we're in Arizona, and now I got to figure out how to I get this these things to overseas and we're only allowed one bag 23 kgs and maybe they would let a second one on we decided to take the chance and take that second bag each Mm -hmm. so but those were like a hundred dollars each bag to take them on the plane yeah it was crazy and then we got a 200 square foot pod to put the rest of the things in now i don't know what 200 square foot looks like do you I don't think it's as big as my bathroom. <laughs> but if you were to like pack that up, how would you do that? Oh my goodness. And, and things don't pack evenly in perfectly shaped little <laughs> cubes, right? So knowing that it was a pod, so it was like just, you know, a box, basically mm-hmm. a, a box. Um, I asked them the dimensions of the box and I went and got um, that painter's tape. And I painted, I, I put painter's tape in the shape of the box in my lounge, in my living room. Oh, now that's smart. So then I packed the things that absolutely had to go first in there, which was the supplement that my husband drank every day that kept him mobile, because there was no way I was going without that. And then our two bicycles, which were electric bicycles, and that's what we were using for transportation. And we thought we'd just take those with us and it would be easy. And then... Then we packed other things around it. We packed our two suitcases and anything that didn't fit, we sold or gave away. Mostly gave away. It's smart that you have electric bicycles. I still might have been hesitant about that, but you want to keep him moving and mobile as much as possible. Is that right? Yes. And one of the best things for Parkinson's is actually bicycle bicycling. Really? That's good to know. Yeah. And he... He couldn't walk, but he could get on his bicycle and he could ride around the block. 
It was amazing. And he can do balance okay then. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. he's Good. he was a builder and you could find him up on the side of a building on those pump jack things, those little tiny pump. Yeah. Wow. So you really put things into that that I wouldn't have thought of. I mean, the, the little tape to make it, you know, to help you know what 200 square feet looks like is brilliant. And I never would have occurred to me. So that's to me, it's the little things sometimes yeah. that display wisdom. But you also and, took a huge chance. You're here in America where you know how everything works. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have a job, but you know how everything works. And you have people and you're moving across the world. And you had to figure out a lot, I would imagine. At least it's an English speaking country, so, so you could figure it out in English. But even though we talked about some of the language difference, right? <laughs> it's English speaking, but when I went in and ordered fish and chips and they asked me if I wanted salt or chicken salt, I did not know what they were saying. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so you don't even like, okay, we don't even know that chicken and salt exists in, right? in America. Oh and they're saying it like this. They're saying, you want salt or chicken salt? And I'm like, Yes, please. I know those are English words. I know they are, but I haven't a clue. I'm like, can you please spell it? And they were like, S A L T. I'm like, okay, salt. I feel a little bit ridiculous, but okay, salt. What's the other thing? And they were like, chicken salt. And I'm like, what is chicken salt? It's chicken flavored <laughs> salt. It's chicken flavored salt. And it's, so it's actually kind of like chicken bouillon, Quite. it sounds like, maybe. Yeah, only salted. Yeah, salted chicken. Yes, yeah, sort of. okay. Yeah, sort of, I guess. Probably very similar. <laughs> awesome. So <laughs> then you made it, though. You made it all the way over there. And then what was it like your first few months? Were you ever tempted to just, like, turn around and go home? No, never. Never, never, never. Um, we... My husband said I could live anywhere I wanted. Mm -hmm. So when I was in the States, I looked through and, you know, what's the temperatures? What's the weather? Let me find a really nice place. So we did. And we went there first and we explored. We found a place to live and we went in to sign the lease. And then we were going to go visit his mom and come back when the apartment was ready. Mm -hmm. We went in to sign the lease and they were like, well, it's going to be furnished now. So the price has changed and we don't really know it. And I'm like, well, I'm not signing something without knowing how much it's going to be. I was like, so when you figure out how much it's going to be, you call me. And so off we went down to visit his mother with no return ticket because we didn't know when we were coming back or we didn't know what we had, you know, if we even had a place to come back to. They called and they were raising it by $60 a week. A week? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Hello, I can put furnishings in my house for $240 a month for the rest of however long I rent there. No, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. no, I'm not using your furnishings. I will get another place to live. So we're down south now. We're in the south of the south mm -hmm. where his mom lives and it is freezing and windy and rainy and I'm like oh what do we do now yeah. but by the time we'd been there a month or two I'm pretty much falling in love with the people getting to know people already <laughs> so and also saw how much my husband enjoyed being around his mom and realizing that she wasn't going to live forever and I wanted to give him some time with her so I was like, well, let's just stay in the area and see what happens. God seems to have brought us here for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> so we stayed there. You know, sometimes, and we're about out of time, so I just want to bring this <laughs> up because we choose places sometimes, and we choose comfort, and those things don't always satisfy when God knows where he wants to put us, sometimes we resist or delay. And sometimes we can, um, I was talking about it in today's One Moment Wiser, we can, you know, wander off from where he is 
or stay behind when he starts to move. And number one, we get out of his protection and we can get gouged $60 a week. But number two, we also miss so much. The, the pastor yesterday was talking about how the Israelites, you know, God put himself right between them and the Egyptians. And they had the Red Sea on one side, Egyptians on the other. And, you know, if anybody had, had thought for a minute, oh, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to go get something that I left behind or whatever, they would have ended up back in slavery. But it, when they crossed with God through a difficult situation, they ended up in their own place, the place they were meant to be. And it sounds like you really ended up in a place you were meant to be. And his mom, for that time with her, is is priceless. There is no replacing that. Yeah. Like that. He, he had five years with his mom before she passed. So. What a blessing. And there's a fun story to that, too, the timing of that. So we we still have to have continue this conversation yeah. next we week. But again next week. <laughs> Happy. Oh, I wonder yes. if I'll be able to sit outside next week. I just could not go in tonight, you guys. So I know I look a little bit like a ghost, but I could not <laughs> leave the outdoors. It was such a pretty night. Well, Cindy Lou, thank you so much for being with us today. I will definitely look forward to next week and continuing this story, but I'm excited for you as you launch the Be Bold You membership group. And um, you guys keep listening for uh, word about how that's going and how you can participate. But at the moment, if you would go to Cindy Lou's page, Be Bold You on Facebook and like it, or go to her podcast and subscribe to it. And of course, do the same with One Moment Wiser. We'd love to have your reviews and we'd like to know what interests you, what you'd like to hear about. God bless you. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.